All right, let's walk through a normal circuit. It's always safest to backtrack full length of the runway. Turn at a walking pace using the full width. Rudder first, brake only as required. The runway slope, so you may need to increase a bit of power just to uh, get up that slope. Line up with the centre line under your control stick. Taxi forward just a little to make sure the nose wheel is straight and hold on brakes. Confirm the runway number. Confirm runway heading on DI and compass. Check the windsock and apply aileron into wind. Power up to 20%. Check the T's and P's. Check PFD, cautions and warnings are clear. Make your rolling call on the CTAF. Release the brakes, slip your heels to the floor, smoothly apply full power. Keep your hand on the power lever for the takeoff. Check airspeed is rising, power RPM are normal. Apply right rudder to oppose yaw and enough aileron is to maintain stability on the centre line. At 60 to 65 knots, centralise the ailerons and gently apply back pressure to rotate. Allow the aircraft to accelerate and smoothly set 7 to 8 degrees pitch up and maintain best rate of climb at 72 knots. Rudder for balance and adjust heading for drift. Use a combination of peripheral vision and a landmark ahead of the aircraft to maintain track on centre line. Other than while trimming, you should still have your hand on the power lever for the climb. At 300 feet, confirm aircraft performance. Approaching 600 feet, retract flap. Allow the aircraft to accelerate and reduce power to 92%. Hold a steady attitude and retrim. When flap is retracted, you'll feel the aircraft both sink and start to accelerate. This is normal. Resist the urge to make a large change of pitch. Simply hold a steady attitude, 8 degrees, and the aircraft will accelerate and continue to climb. Conduct a thorough lookout for traffic at 700 feet AGL. Find a landmark on the horizon to use as your crosswind point and turn towards it with a rate 1 climbing turn. Be sure to allow for wind on crosswind. Good drift awareness is vital to flying a consistent circuit. The wind at circuit height will be stronger than that experience close to the ground. If the wind is not allowed for, you simply turn the aircraft at 90 degrees to the circuit. Drift will make your pattern inconsistent and usually result in an unstable approach. Slow flight means more drag, therefore more drift. Make sure you anticipate your level out at 1000 feet AGL. Allow the aircraft to accelerate to 100 knots, reduce power to 50% and trim. Look out and make your downwind call. Conduct a level turn onto downwind. Early downwind, your priority should be to trim the aircraft for straight and level. Check your glide spacing and ensure you are flying parallel to the runway. Find a landmark ahead of you to assist with maintaining your spacing. Remember, make sure you consider crosswind and drift. Complete your pre-landing checks, remembering to keep your performance scan active between each check. Don't fixate. Check the runway is clear and confirm the surface wind on the windsock. During your performance scan, make sure airspeed is below 110 knots so you're ready to extend flap. Reduce power a little if you're too fast. Approaching the runway threshold, extend takeoff flap. Anticipate the resulting increase in lift. Ensure you are ready to apply forward pressure on the controls to remain at 1,000 feet AGL. The aircraft will stabilise between 90 and 95 knots. Retrim and adjust for drift. Look over your left shoulder to anticipate 45 degrees to the touchdown point on the runway. 
approaching the base turn, look out for traffic and make a base call. Reduce the power to 20 to 25 percent and maintain a thousand feet. Reducing power will ensure that the speed is reduced to 85 to 90 knots before you commit to the descending base turn. Turn base while gently pitching down. Target 90 knots and 500 feet per minute. Be sure to adjust your heading for drift. Ideally, you want to be turning final at 700 feet AGL. So you should be through 850 feet halfway along base. When controlling speed and rate of descent, remember power plus attitude equals performance. Adjust pitch and power as necessary. For example, if speed is low and rate of descent is low, pitch down. If speed is high and rate of descent is high, pitch up. If speed is low and rate of descent is OK, then apply power. If speed is OK, but rate of descent is low, then reduce power. Mentally extend the centre line of the runway so you can anticipate your final turn. Approaching final, look out for traffic and commence a gentle descending turn. Do not allow the nose to pitch down too much in the turn, otherwise you will increase speed. Try and maintain 90 knots, turn on to the extended centre line. A stabilised approach is vital. Heading and pitch only require small corrections. Descent rate is not more than 1000 feet per minute. Airspeed is no more than VREF plus 10 knots and not less than VREF. Briefings and checklists completed. Configured for landing no later than 300 feet AGL. Assess your profile on final. If high, extend landing flap early. If low, delay the flap. Adjust heading for drift and fly a track that keeps the extended center line under your control stick. Extend the landing flap and pitch down. Speed should stabilise at 80 to 85 knots. Wait for the speed to stabilise before you adjust power. The touchdown zone should be almost in the middle of the windscreen. Adjust aim point with pitch and speed with power as necessary. Complete final checks and confirm approach is stabilised. To achieve VREF of 76 knots before the runway threshold, slowly and gradually reduce power towards idle while gently pitching up. You should be transitioning to the flare height over the threshold. Power to idle just before flare height. Try to hold the aircraft level just above the runway. Do not focus on the nose of the aircraft, instead pitch the nose up into your vision while concentrating on the end of the runway. Shorter pilots may need to see the end of the runway disappear under the nose of the aircraft while landing. Look at the end of the runway, use your peripheral vision to judge height and sink rate. Use aileron for centerline and rudder for alignment as you increase back pressure to control the sink. Touch on the main wheels first. As the aircraft slows down, you will need to increase the aileron into wind to increase centerline stability. When speed is approaching a running pace, slide your feet up the rudders and use your toes to apply gentle braking. Now exit the runway or turn around to backtrack for more circuits. The keys to proficient circuits are ensure smooth and deliberate control inputs, aileron, elevator and rudder. Good coordination of power and attitude. Always remember power plus attitude equals performance. Light grip on controls and make sure you trim every time you change the aircraft's configuration. Awareness of wind, its strength and direction. 
have a good understanding of the effect of wind on the aircraft's ground speed and track. Energy management. Understand the aircraft's limitations. Good trend monitoring and speed awareness, late downwind, base and final. Maintain an effective scan. You cannot afford to fixate. Scan both inside and outside the cockpit. Practice drills and checks on the ground before your flight. And lastly, anticipate the next event. If you are only thinking about what is happening now, then you're already behind the aircraft and your circuits will suffer. If you have any questions, make sure you ask your flight instructor before your flight. Enjoy your circuits and I hope you're flying solo soon.